Good morning and welcome to this week. Showdown. Putin masses more troops. Obama demands a pullback. Is a new invasion next or will diplomacy prevail? We get answers from Putin's man in Washington and ABC News exclusive. Christie's comeback? People do inexplicably stupid things. Has the feisty governor put Bridgegate behind him or will another shoe drop? We have exclusive interviews with the two dueling investigators. Plus, baseball's opening day is here and ESPN's Keith Olbermann joins us live. From ABC News, This Week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. Hello again, lots of ground to cover this Sunday morning, so let's get right to the latest on the search for Flight 370. With the clock ticking down on those black box batteries, more ships and planes have joined the massive effort to identify new debris. ABC's David Wright is embedded in the search. Good morning, David. Good morning, George. From the deck of the Ocean Shield, an Australian vessel built to handle the roughest of seas, sub-Antarctic conditions. This ship is now getting set to ship out into the search area. It'll take three to four days just to reach the search area. Hopefully by then, search teams will have found the debris field from Flight 370. Today, 10 planes are out looking, several of them reporting they have spotted objects in the water. But until surface vessels are able to retrieve them, we won't know if they're from the missing plane. The Ocean Shield will be searching under the water, towing a U.S. Navy pinger locator like this one, listening for the beacons on those black boxes. How big a noise does this thing make? You can see the size. If you were to put it in the water, you wouldn't be able to hear it with your ear. The vessel is also carrying a U.S. Navy submersible robot to be used to map any underwater wreckage and plan how best to salvage it. How long a journey are you preparing for? We're preparing for anywhere up to 45 days. And in a sign that Malaysia is no longer calling all the shots, a retired member of Australia's equivalent of the Joint Chiefs of Staff took command of the multinational task force searching these waters. Time is of the essence now, not least because the batteries on those black box recorders are running out. For this week, David Wright on board the Ocean Shield, Garden Island, Australia. And ABC's aviation consultant Steve Gaynor joins us now. Steve, we just heard from David Wright. The clock is ticking. Those batteries could have run out by early next week. This is make or break time. It sure is, George. Uh, if you remember in the past couple weeks down here in these lower search areas, we've really been chasing ghosts on satellite images. But in the past couple days, an international body of aviation experts has gone back and looked at the data and said, no, we think the best place to look is up here in this new search area. It's some 700 miles to the northeast of the old search area. The good news is that this, this, uh, these waters are, are, aren't as rough, the currents aren't nearly as difficult, uh, and some of the water is a little bit shallower. But if you look at this, it's the size of the country of Poland, and really we're back to square one on the search area. And if those black boxes go silent, we may never know what happened. That's right. And the black boxes are going to be heard, as, we, as David Wright just saw, uh, coming off from a ship that will be, have to transit out to this area. It'll take three or four days to get out there. And then when they do their operations, they will work only as fast as a person can walk. So think about that. Searching the, something the size of Poland at only a walking pace. You can see that we have three to four days before that pinger runs out. And so time is of the essence.